Now, in my earlier part one and part two of the video series, I have shared with you what are the three major decisions that make or break your life. Now, let us talk about the fourth major decision. Now, major decision number four is your financial decision. Money is not everything, but everything is money. And one wrong move or right move will actually keep your life in very different trajectories. Let me give you an example. So my neighbor, my next door neighbor is selling their house. So one of the property agent, he's age 62 and he shared with my husband that many years ago, he bought, he owned a landed property. at five, He bought it at 500,000 Sing dollars, but he sold it too early. And do you know how much that house would have worth if he didn't sell it. So in today's term, it is actually worth six million dollars. So essentially, he made a wrong financial decision to sell the house back then because if he didn't sell the house, he would have six million dollars in his retirement nest. And he said, if only I didn't sell the house back then, I wouldn't be working here at 62 years old as a property agent to sell the house. You see, this one major financial decision that he made. Let me give you another example for my for my case. So remember I mentioned that within four months me and my husband went to buy our matrimonial home. So my husband wanted to have kids. So he wanted to move to a bigger house. So back then he was staying in a three bedroom con private condominium and he was thinking about moving to a four bedroom condominium, something bigger. Then he was looking through the property websites and he realized that the delta difference between a four bedroom condominium versus a landed property was just a few hundred thousand dollars. And so he realized that the price gap was very small, but the value of the asset is huge different because one is a private condominium, one is a landed. Literally, you own land in Singapore. And do you know that Singapore land is very, is very exclusive because we are land scarce. If we buy a land in Singapore, highly likely it will appreciate in value because the supply is limited, it is scarce, and there's always demand for land in Singapore. And at a point, he happened to have a conversation with his colleague, and his colleague was intending to buy a landed as well. And through his observation, he realized that landed is the way to go. To be honest, I was so fearful because a landed house costs millions of dollars in Singapore. It is going to be the most biggest purchase of my life. So just to give you context, I owned my own private property before I even met my husband. And for me to put in money to buy a big, huge property investment was so daunting. We are talking about $3 million. So we, we did a lot of calculations, all right, to determine what is the budget that we could afford to buy the landed house together. In my mind, I know, yes, I know that we were sure, high chance, very, very high chance we were sure make money by buying a land in Singapore. But I was still somewhat fearful because he was still my boyfriend, right? He's not my husband. So what if he runs away with my money? So anyway, fast forward, I can tell you that because of this decision that we made, this one financial decision is giving us such a strong head start. So what is the financial decision that you're going to make? And of course, I've made some mistakes in my life. For example, I used to buy this stock at $136. It rose to $300. So essentially, I could make about $60,000. But I don't know why I didn't sell it. And it went back down. Hmm and I missed the opportunity to make that $60,000 USD. So what I'm sharing here with you is in life, you just need to make less financial mistakes and make one or two good financial decisions and your life will be very different. This, so it is very important that you understand some basic simple concepts of money. If you earn $10,000 a month, you're not going to spend more than $10,000, right? You need to spend lesser than that. Save and invest the rest. I used to make the mistake of saving for the sake of saving, but because I didn't know what to invest in. So at the end of the day, I invested in my own property back then. 
of course I made money so that was a good financial decision as well but that also meant that we had lesser money to buy a bigger landed house together with my husband because my money was stuck in another property and if I didn't invest in that property maybe we could have bought a bigger landed house and made even more capital appreciation but of course we can't tell the future so still remember this concept spend less than what you earn save and invest the rest all right so you know i was looking at my own investment stock portfolio okay do you know that one that performs the best is s p 500 so essentially my s p 500 like grew 40 50 percent yeah, but research has shown that over a long term, S&P 500 on average is at least 10%, grows at least 10%. So if you do not know what to invest in, just put in S&P 500. Just invest in a low cost S&P 500 fund. If you want to know, you can look up Vanguard, it's called VOO. This was actually recommended by Charlie Munger himself, right, to look for low cost index funds. That is the Vanguard S&P 500. So anyway, this is not advice for you to where to invest your money. But what I want to share with you is you need to learn about managing your finances. I see people, you know, earning lots of money, but they do not know how to use their money wisely. Spend on luxuries, they stay in expensive hotels, they eat super good food, but they do not know how to channel the money to good use. If you can channel the money to good use, you have saved yourself years of working and reach retirement much earlier. Just like how that 62 year old property agent that I mentioned. So I remember reading this news many years ago. This lady who won $1 million in, in lottery, but she was a cleaner. Uh, no discrimination here. What I want to share with you is that because she was not financially literate, so she actually squandered in a way the $1 million away. So she's a widow by the way. Her brother borrowed money from her to invest and start a company, a, a bus company, a travel bus company, and she lost the whole money. And the rest she... I don't know what she buy, but essentially the $1 million was gone within like one, two years. And again, she's back to the same cycle. She's back to the poverty cycle again. So what does this tell you? That even if you have money, but if you don't know how to manage it, if you don't know how to use the money, you will not have, you will not be able to keep that money. Be very careful with making the financial decisions. It will make or break your life. Like this lady, she's back to poverty. Like the property agent, he has to continue working at 62 years old instead of retiring with $6 million comfortably in his pocket. More than enough for him for his old age to use, right? If me and my husband didn't make that choice of, of buying uh, investing in money in the landed property, we wouldn't have made the capital gains and we may not have been able to retire earlier. Alright, so financial decisions, make it wisely. And the fifth major decision you need to make is your lifestyle. Have you ever been sick before? And when you are sick, are you able to fully focus and have the energy to live your life, live your quality life every day? So recently, I actually suffered from a long cough. It took more than one month for me to recover. So in fact, I just recovered from the long cough just like maybe a few days. And during that whole one month plus of coughing, I feel like I literally dying, you know, because when I talk, I cough. When I sleep, I cough. I couldn't sleep well and I couldn't enjoy my holiday as much because I was essentially coughing and I feel so much phlegm in me. My energy level was low. I I couldn't kiss my kids. I couldn't kiss my husband on the lips. So life just sucks because I was sick. So can you imagine if you have a bad lifestyle that causes your health to deteriorate and not have your health at the optimum level? You are literally sacrificing your quality of life. And that's why lifestyle is so important. So, I do not know how, what is your lifestyle like? Do you smoke a lot? Do you drink a lot over the limit? Do you live sedentary lifestyle where you don't move your ass at all? You don't go for walks, you don't exercise, you don't get some sun. And, you know, all these are going to add up 
and also do you not just physical health you know also our mental health are you distressing yourself do you have an avenue of outlet do you read every day so let me give you an example so after i delivered my baby obviously i had water retention and i was you know having loose belly and just literally just general fats around me not so fat because uh i still managed to slim down quite fast but what i essentially did was that i kept myself active i went for walks i went for regular walks uh, especially in the evenings with my husband when he's back from work after dinner i climb the stairs every day which essentially i'm being forced to because you know in my house i have to climb stairs so it is natural that i climb many stairs every day my bedroom is on the level three and my dining is on the level one so i have to up down up down every day and i do yoga so i keep myself very active and also wash out what you eat because you are what you eat do you eat fried food a lot do you eat all the oily stuff and are you not eating your vegetables no we can't stress this enough right so i myself i love home cooked food this is one of my favorite food so essentially whole week i eat a lot of home cooked food so only like maybe over the weekends fridays weekends that uh, me and my family eat out but most of the time i actually and i work from home so most of the time i eat at home so it's very much healthy eating but if you know most of you are out working in your office out meeting your clients or whatever you are traveling when you eat out what are your food choices do you spend time to self-love and self-care for yourself in terms of exercise in terms of nourishing your heart your soul your mind do you read every day so you know my husband reads every day so i will fetch him to the train station and he will take train to work and on the train ride he loves his train rides because he is in his own world he will put on his earpiece and he will just tune out from the outside world and he will read on his handphone so we both of us we install this app called Libby and if you are interested write in the comments below I'll show you what is this free app that you can read books for free knowledge is free he reads every day and if their book is good he will actually buy the physical book to keep at home and for reference and I will come and sometimes take a read when he tells me that oh this book is so good so it nourishes your mind Remember this phrase, be 1% better every day. Because when you're 1% every day, you are literally expounding that 1% of extra knowledge on top of the 1% that you had yesterday. And if you keep adding this up, keep adding this up over time, what you're essentially getting is that you are going to compound your knowledge. You are going to compound your wisdom. Over time, you realize that you have grown so much you have learned so much that you are no longer the same person you were back then all right and of course if you want to enjoy a good quality of life if you want to live a long right age healthy life you need to think about what lifestyle you're having now you need to move your ass more you need to read more you need to eat more healthily and i hope that you know with all my sharings of these five major decisions helps you to make better choices for your life and that you can live for the better because end of the day i have created this video also so that my kids in future when they grow up they can watch this and look at the mommy that oh mommy you shared these five decisions and this is going to change your life trajectory in a much better direction so I hope with this, my friends, it helps you out. Write in the comments below which decision do you think that you have made well in your life. And if there are any decisions that you will want to make the change for, could be in your in terms of your lifestyle. So just hit me with it. Let's communicate with, with each other. If you are facing any challenges in your life that you think that you need some second opinion on which choice should you make, what are the thinking process you need to go through to make that better decision, just share with me in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And I really, really hope that you live a much better choice, much better life 
after you see this video. Thank you and see you around in other videos of mine.